My name is Alicia Mercedes, and I have the honor of serving as NAACP's National Press Secretary. Thank you to everyone who has joined us today. We are so excited to be with you all in celebration of NAACP's 117th National Convention coming to Chicago in 2026. Before we get started, I just wanted to extend a special thank you to Norman. I'm not sure where Mr. Norman is in the room, but thank you so much for having us. So the speaking order for today's program is as follows. First, we will hear from the 57th Mayor of Chicago, the Honorable Brandon Johnson. Following Mayor Johnson, we will hear from Illinois State Governor, uh, Mr. the Honorable, sorry, J.B. Pritzker. <laughs> Following the governor will be the president of the Illinois State Conference of the NAACP, Theodos Pace. NAACP National Board of Directors member and National Convention Committee Chair, Michael Turner. We will then have Deputy Director of the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity within the Office of Tourism, Daniel Thomas. Following Mr. Thomas, we will have Choose Chicago's board chair, Glenn Eden. We will then have the Metropolitan Peer and Exposition Authorities, first black woman CEO, Loretta Clark. And last, but certainly not least, our very own NAACP President and CEO, Derek Johnson, will provide us with closing remarks. Now, it is my distinct honor to introduce you to Chicago's very own Mayor Brandon Johnson. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. It is really truly my honor that all of you are here today particularly as we prepare for this exciting announcement. I want to thank CHU Chicago and all of our local Chicagoland NAACP chapters for their efforts in bringing the NAACP to the greatest freaking city in the world, the city of Chicago. For more than a century, the NAACP has fought for better opportunities. They've also fought for better outcomes for black Americans. As a nation's preeminent civil rights organization, the NAACP is a network of more than two million organizers, community leaders who are ultimately building black political and social power through advocacy, litigation, and civic engagement. And one of those individuals who is here today, I hope that I can dress like him in my second term, Judge Greg Mathis. Would also be remiss if I did not acknowledge the fact that we have an incredible leader as Speaker of the House. I'm sorry, Mr. Governor, but I will like to acknowledge House Speaker Chris Welch. Yeah. Every day, the NAACP fights for social justice and civil rights for black people and ultimately to create a more just and equitable world. And while they have made great strides, in their fight, we all know that there is still much more work to do. I'm grateful that we also have a partner in City Council, the Alder of the Fourth Ward, Alderman Lamont Robinson is here. But as we know, there's much work to be done. That's why I'm really excited that Chicago will host the 117th Convention of the NAACP in 2026. You're gonna have a great time in Chicago. I promise you that. In fact, at the very early part of my administration, and I say early with a little bit of tongue in cheek because it has still only been a year, y'all. <laughs> I went to the 114th convention in Boston 
with the goal of hosting the NAACP right here in Chicago. And apparently it worked, like many of the things that I'm doing since I've been in office for only a year. <laughs> the convention brings organizers, influencers, change makers, leaders, scholars, entertainers, creatives, and many more. Bring them all together to network and exchange ideas. The NAACP National Convention provides an open and welcoming space for attendees to discuss their ideas and, of course, respond to ongoing pressure. And in closing, it's the ideas that are born from this convention or these conventions that turn into impactful action throughout the year. And it's these actions that will continue to uplift, empower, and support, and protect the black community, which ultimately provides liberation for all. So I'm very proud, of course, of the hard work of the NAACP. And with that, I'm also proud to now bring to the stage, I believe it's Governor J. No. Period, B. No. Period, Pritzker. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Brandon Johnson with no periods. Um, uh, it is always a pleasure to be with you. It is honestly thrilling to be with you, particularly this afternoon for this occasion. You know, I'm very proud of the work that the city and the state have done together to deliver the Democratic National Committee to the city of Chicago. But our partnership is delivering the best political convention this country's ever seen. And now we will take the expertise and the uh, partnership that we've developed and apply it to another incredible event that will benefit the people of Chicago and the state of Illinois, and that's the NAACP Annual Convention. As a life member who joined almost 30 years ago, I'm very proud <laughs> to be a part of this really momentous event that we're announcing today. You know, the 1908 Springfield race riot is often cited as an inciting event that led to the formation of the NAA, NAACP. This tragic and ugly part of Illinois' history serves as a reminder that the persecution, the inhumanity, and the discrimination that black people experienced for 400 years across the United States wasn't just a phenomenon limited to southern states. Illinois, too, was afflicted with the disease of racism. Just this week, President Biden announced that he will designate the site of the 1908 riots in Springfield as a national monument. In Illinois, even as we work to move forward, we must never forget the past and the history that we are still reconciling today. While we host the NAACP convention, Illinois will affirm our commitment to advancing racial equity and the work that still must be done to advance economic and social justice for the black community here and across the entire United States. We ought to be the epicenter of that endeavor. And at least when it comes to the NAACP annual convention in 2026, we will be. So, yeah. So I want to thank the leaders of NAACP for choosing Chicago and the great state of Illinois. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce and turn this podium over to the Illinois State Conference President, Theotis Pace. Theotis. Good evening. My name is Theotis Pace, and I serve as the president of the Illinois State Conference of the NAACP. And with that, will all of the officers of the NACP statewide please stand? President Brinson, President Neighbors, please stand. All NACP members. We are proud to announce our ongoing partnership with Chicago Choice Initiative and the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Office of Tourism as we prepare to host the 117th National Convention to be held here, the Winnie City, 2026. Over the next two years, the collaboration will be instrumental in advancing our shared commitment to racial equality, civil engagement, and equity across the state of Illinois. At the 117th Convention, we will be engaged in critical discussions on these issues and advocating for supportive policies that drive meaningful changes. 
We anticipate welcome delegates from across the state, Illinois, Wisconsin, the Region 3, and participants in Chicago, where we will continue to fight for justice, equality for all. Following in the food, uh, footsteps of Chicago heroes such as Ida B. Wells, Harold Washington, who dedicated their lives to the struggle of equality. I want to thank you. I want to bring to the podium our national board member, Mr. Michael Turner, and also chairman of our convention. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon. As said, my name is Michael Turner, and I proudly serve as a member of our NAACP National Board of Directors and chair of the National Convention Planning Committee. 30 years ago, the NAACP National Convention descended on Chicago, convening 40,000 black Americans, including individuals like poet Maya Angelou, singer Stephanie Mills, and actor Danny Glover, and one of my heroes, baseball legend Hank Aaron. We even had the honor of hearing satellite remarks from none other than South African President Nelson, Nelson Mandela. As we convened in 1994 under the theme of accepting the torch, no one could have predicted what was to come. While Chicago had already elected its first African-American mayor, who knew that it would become the home of our first ever black president, Obama. <laughs> Since 1994, we've most definitely accepted the torch, excelling our community to the highest levels of office, enacting the progressive change necessary to redefine the black culture looks like. And now we join here today, just four days away, from witnessing the first ever par major party nomination of a black woman for president. Yes. Yeah. While we blast, bask in the glory of our progress and look ahead for what's to come, over the next two years, the NAACP is excited to continue building communities in Chicago, engaging with our black-owned businesses, and hearing from my long-term residents, such as Norman, who has already extended a warm Chicago welcome by hosting us today. But I personally want to say thank you to two major people responsible for this. Mr. Mayor, in Boston, you told me you would do whatever it would take to get us here. Governor Pritzker, you hosted us for lunch or breakfast a year ago, and you too said you would do whatever it would take to get us here. You both stood up to what you said, and we are here today because of your commitments, and I applaud you. We are fired up and ready to go. I am proud. I am proud to now turn the mic over to Mr. Daniel Thomas. Well, Michael, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Thomas, and I have the great honor to serve as the Deputy Director for the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Office of Tourism. I'm absolutely honored to be here with you all today. Firstly, I'd like to officially add my Illinois tourism welcome to the NAACP National Convention to Chicago, not only today, but when we welcome you back in 2026. I fell in love with Illinois 18 years ago because in part of its incredible diversity and people. I'm proud to say that when we travel the world and tell the Illinois story, it's because of that diversity at the core that makes us the choice for over 112 million visitors per year. In fact, last year, those visitors spent $47 billion, generating over 278,000 tourism and hospitality jobs in our great state. Our hotel tax revenue hit record 
numbers this year of 322 million, which was a 4.5% increase over last year, fiscal 23. But it did not stop there. With thanks to Governor Pritzker's leadership, otherwise known as our Chief Marketing Officer, we're so proud to be able to support and help bring this historic event to Chicago, thanks to a $2 million grant from DCEO's new Tourism Incentive Program. This critical grant program is designed to attract new events to Illinois, events that have not been in our great state for over three years. This was a critical factor in supporting the bid to bring NAACP conference to Chicago. This historic and empowering convention will help boost our state's thriving tourism economy and industry by supporting hotels and restaurants plus small business including the over 141,000 black-owned businesses across our great state. Yeah. Projected to bring over 10,000 attendees to Chicago, the conference is estimated to have an impact of over $27.5 million. Hosting the NAACP convention in Chicago is a testament to Illinois' commitment to progressive values. Our partnership with NAACP, the City of Chicago, we will aim to create an unforgettable experience for convention attendees by, show by showcasing the best of what our state has to offer, whether it be our world-class cultural institutions or one of the Chicago's 77 diverse and distinct neighborhoods. That's what makes Chicago and Illinois a world-class visitor destination. Illinois is excited to welcome NAACP National Convention to our great state. Thank you once again to everyone that was involved in bringing this event to our home, otherwise known as Chicago. And now is my great pleasure to introduce to Chicago Chairman, Mr. Glenn Eden. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is such a milestone day and full circle moment for many of us in this room. I had the opportunity and honor of attending the NAACP's board member uh, meeting in DC, in DC, Washington DC recently, where the board decided to select Chicago as the host city for the 2026 convention. It was an enormously <laughs> proud moment. And as I said in that meeting, the partnership that you're going to continue to build with our city and state is going to feel more like a significant long-term investment in NAACP's mission and values in 2026 and beyond, and not a transactional short-term relationship like you had in some other markets. So on behalf of our board, interim CEO Rich Gamble, our wonderful staff, especially Dustin, Michelle, and Eric, along with the entire city hospitality and tourism industry, thank you for choosing Chicago. We can't wait to welcome you to our beautiful city in 2026. And I also like to take this time to give a special thank you to Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, Mayor Johnson, and Deputy Mayor Kenya Merritt for their enthusiastic support and deep commitment to making this day a reality since day one. When the, NAA, when the NAACP comes here two summers from now, you'll have an unrivaled experience in a city that knows how to deliver outstanding events. Just look at what we've got going on right now with the DNC. Our city is rolling out the red, I mean blue carpet this week. You know about that blue wall. And we'll do the same for you in, the, in two years your attendees will get that same unmatched hospitality and the accommodations, attractions, and amenities that make Chicago the seven-time best big city in the U.S. by Condé Nast Travelers. And we're working on that number eight, too. Not only will you experience a city and state that embraces the values of the NAACP, where people like, that look like me aren't just residents, but are prominent leaders who give back to their communities in so many ways like many of all of you in this room. 
It's what makes and it drives our authentic approach to tourism and hospitality and will be front and center during your time in Chicago. You'll find a very dynamic and infinite city that is welcoming to your guests and committed to delivering the best national convention ever. Now, I am proud to introduce my friend, fellow Chew Chicago board member, industry trailblazer herself, Larita Clark, CEO of MPA, owns the McCormick Place, which is the North America's largest convention center. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm so excited to be here. I too joined our group when we were in Boston and uh, it was an amazing time. Didn't know how it was gonna turn out. Uh, they had us doing lots that we weren't expecting to do. <laughs> but it was so wonderful to meet all of you, those that were there with us. Um, I just wanna let you know, I uh, they told you I am the CEO of the Metropolitan Pier and Exposition Authority. And many of you may be saying, what is that, you know? Uh, but first, let me say this. I've been CEO for over four years, and I want to take a moment to thank our wonderful governor and mayor for entrusting uh, four, maybe five industries with me and our teams at Metropolitan Pier and Exposition Authority. Thank you. So the Metropolitan Pier and Exposition Authority owns McCormick Place, which as Glenn said, is the largest convention center in North America. The Marriott Marquis Chicago Hotel, the Hyatt Regency McCormick Place Hotel, and the Wintrust Arena. So I am so thrilled to be here today, like I said, and honored to welcome the NAACP 117th National Convention to McCormick Place. We welcome hundreds of conventions, meetings, and trade shows each year to our campus. And as any parent knows, while you love all of your children, sometimes you might be particularly proud of one of them. Well, that's the case today. We value and appreciate every meeting and convention that comes to McCormick Place. However, I must admit that today we are particularly proud to have been selected to be your host in 2026. The values and mission of NAACP align with the values of our organization. MPEA's mission is to create economic opportunities for our community. We embody these values every day on our campus as we actively work to bring local business, especially women and minority businesses, to our campus as vendors and as participants. In fact, about a third of our spending on campus is with women and minority-owned businesses. We create not just jobs, but careers for nearly 4,000 people, many of whom are also our neighbors. The final point I wanted to make is McCormick Place is a place where history is made. The buildings on our campus hold many stories. Tomorrow, as you know, the DNC is kicking off and our teams are working hard to get ready for that. McCormick Place has hosted every president since John F. Kennedy, and hundreds of world leaders have been through our halls. We consider the NAACP's annual convention to be on the same level as these meetings. As some of the nation's most powerful black leaders gather, we are excited and humbled to be able to play a small part in this meeting. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Derek Johnson, NAACP's president and CEO. And again, thank you on behalf of MPEA. Good afternoon. On behalf of the NAACP, I would like to extend our thanks to Mary Johnson, who I've actually known for over 10 years before either one of us had the titles we currently hold, and my hair was a lot blacker than what it is now, to Governor Pritzker, to Congressman Jackson, who I had the opportunity to spend time with on last weekend. I think he, he left out. Uh, to our friends that choose Chicago, the Illinois Office of Tourism, McCormick Place, and current 
and more importantly, future sponsors. We need your support. And all those who have made time to join us today. I want to acknowledge our staff who is here. If you're on staff in ACP, please stand. Let's give them a hand. This is a hardworking group. <laughs> to members of our National Board of Directors, I see Ron Reynolds, who is the chair of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus, to Saloa Steele, who is the vice chair of our foundation board. Hope I have not forget anyone because they all are my bosses and I like my job. <laughs> but more importantly to our volunteers, to our state leaders, our branch leaders, and all of the volunteers who make up this organization we call NACP, if you all will stand, let's give them a hand. Because of you, we exist. <laughs> Illinois is significant for the NACP. For over a century, we have existed. And we only exist because of two groups, one that formed in 1907 in Niagara, Canada, and they decided they needed to address the race question. Individuals who realized that the promise of America was not being guaranteed towards their rights. Although many of their ancestors and some of them took up arms to save the Union, we began to see a rash of terrorism across the country, on average a lynching a day. But it was one race riot right here in Illinois, in Springfield, Illinois, in 1908. Another set of individuals, many of whom will be considered white today, but was not considered white then because race is a social construct. That if you was Jewish, you was not considered white. If you was Irish, Italian, you was not considered white. If you was anything other than a wasp, white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and for that matter, male, you was not considered a part of the power dynamic. And as a result of that race riot in Springfield, Illinois, one group called the other say, can we meet? to form an organization that will be an advocacy organization to advocate for public policy to ensure that equal protection under the law will be afforded to every citizen in this country. That even if you was not a citizen, you should be treated with human dignity. It is a job of the NAACP not only to serve out our mission to ensure that democracy work for everyone, so it is no accident that we're having this press conference today as the Democratic Convention convenes this week. Let's be clear, we are nonpartisan, but we are political as hell. <laughs> as we should be. It is also important to note that it's been 30 years since we have convened here in Chicago, and I was at that convention. I was a little frustrated being a Chicago Judge Mathis because we're Detroiters and the Chicago Bulls start beating Detroit. We didn't like that part, right? But with that said, it was, it was for me eye-opening to be at that time my third co national convention to see individuals like Aristide come through, Aristide come through here, Nelson Mandela come through here, and so many other national dignitaries. Why? Because the voice of the black community has always come through the NAACP. And so we in Chicago, some of us who live in Mississippi like I do, we call it North Mississippi because so many of us are here. So many migrated here from the South looking for opportunities, looking for something that our Constitution promised to them. Some of them had to flee from the South like Ida B. Wells coming here. We drove down Ida B. Wells Street, one of our founders of the association. And an individual that we recognize because the power of black women is undeniable. Yeah. And so now we're here 30 years later, we'll be here 30 years later for the 117th National Convention. The mission is the same. The goal is clear. We must fight to make sure democracy work for all and that every citizen is treated with equal protection on the law and every human being, regardless of their citizenship status, should be treated with human dignity. Let's stand together, let's work together because we will win together if we do so. 
We cannot allow the forces of otherism to take hold in this country and create a level of tribalism that would cause all of us harm. And it's only through our collective effort that we will be able to live out to that social contracts commitment that we call the Constitution. And it's with that spirit that I thank you all, Chicago and the state of Illinois, for welcome, welcoming us here. And we look forward to being here in 2026. Thank you. Well, thank you to all of our speakers. And again, thank you to everyone who has joined us here today. We will now begin our Q&A session. Uh, we're going to take about 10 minutes to answer any questions you may have. So if you are a reporter who has a question, please line up over here on my right-hand side, and we will uh, proceed to the microphone here, state your outlet and your question. Okay, well, <laughs> here, I can give you this myself. Can they hear me up there? We can. could just about the importance of this but also wanted to touch base uh, about the convention mayor um, what does this mean just to you and for the city it's kind of a double win if you will we were getting the DNC and now getting this um, convention coming here in two years well, thank you for that question and just for clarity uh, President Johnson and your honor uh, Judge Mathis the wins that you did have we had to send a West Sider to Detroit to make sure that you all got championships. Yeah. <laughs> Get them straight, man. <laughs> Isn't that right, Rufus Williams, West Side? <laughs> That's right, Mark Aguirre, we had a 10 too. Um, you know, look, it, it, it is an exciting time for the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois. Um, you know, what this convention means for 2026 in AACP, why it's so relevant at this moment. Um, first of all, it does speak to um, the value system that we have in Chicago and Illinois. I mean, we are the vanguard for, for that, which is just, that which is righteous and that which is just. Um, there's a long history, as you know, in the city of Chicago. The consciousness of, of the country was, was raised through the writings of Ida B. Wells. Um, Reverend Jesse Jackson said, keep hope alive, which paid the pathway for yes, we can. So it's really just on par. Everything that is historic comes out of the city of Chicago, whether it's Carnegie Steel, the Model T, electricity came to life at the World Fair, so this is very much consistent, which is also you know, in line with the, the DNC. Once again, the city of Chicago will be at the forefront as we launch um, this world into a new historic um, future with electing Vice President Harris and a former social studies teacher, Governor Walls. Yeah, well, I want them to experience and see the soul of Chicago, uh, one of the most diverse places in America. But I also want them to recognize that this is the best place to do business. Uh, since I've been in office, first 15 months, $20 billion of investments with the work of Governor Pritzker and the legislature. We have quantum computing come to the southeast side of Chicago. It's a multi-billion dollar investment. Yeah. <laughs> Right on the west side of Chicago, there's a $7 billion investment right around the United Center for Affordable Homes and expanding more green space. The $1.25 billion investment for economic as well as community development. For my administration, the largest investment in that regard in the history of Chicago. So I want people to be able to know that the city of Chicago is certainly open for business and you can be open for business and be pro-worker. We have the most substantial 
uh, expansive paid time off ordinance anywhere in the country. The people of Chicago asked for a day off. I gave them 10. We abolished subminimum wage, which has its vestiges to slavery, where every single tip worker will now receive a raise as a result of our work. So I want them to be able to experience and feel and see all of that and make sure that no one who comes to the city of Chicago, if I catch you with ketchup next to a hot dog, you better have some french fries with you. Thank you, Craig. We're going to move on to the next question. I'm sorry. Uh, sure. Governor, do you, would you like to take a question? Well, it's a big week for the country. Uh, and I'm, I'm very proud of the work that the city has done, that the mayor has done, that our law enforcement officers, uh, up and down the, the scale, you know, starting with uh, here in the city of Chicago, the CPD, and of course, Illinois State Police, our sheriff's office. And then don't forget, we've, we're coordinating with Secret Service and FBI and, and uh, with law enforcement across the Midwest who are helping out. So I'm very pleased with all the coordination, the planning that's been done for almost a year and a half now to make sure that this is going to be a safe and secure convention. Uh, we've got, you know, four really great days ahead in the convention hall and also outside the convention hall because, you know, uh, following on what the mayor said, uh, we have so much to be proud of about this great city. And one of the things we have to be proud of is the people of this city are good and decent and honorable people. And the, the hospitality that our visitors, the 50,000 people that are coming to this city are gonna feel is, I mean, what I think we sometimes take for granted, but we know that it's special. And so when people come here, those 50,000 people, and they visit here and they experience who we are, not only are they gonna wanna come back to you know experience all the things they saw this week, uh, but also they're going to want to bring their families and spend more time. Uh, and I think that's great for uh, not only our people, but also our economy. Yeah. And I know we're all very excited about the convention happening this week, but we are here to celebrate our 117th convention. So we'd prefer to keep questions uh, on topic. Just uh, on what uh, the, uh, what Craig had asked, um, we've gotten word that there are about 150 or so National Guardsmen uh, and women that have been called to be on standby. And Governor, you've said in the past you did not think that uh, this event would need the National Guard. Uh, can you confirm that they are here on standby and what changed and led to that decision? Yeah, I'll try to be quick so we can get back to, to on topic. but. Um, uh, I've never said that we wouldn't have any National Guard. Um, I just, just to be clear, we have about 250 um, uh, military police. They're trained to be police. I want to be clear with everybody. National Guard are not, generally speaking, trained to do crowd control or trained to arrest people. That's not what they do. They're trained to, you know, to be Army soldiers and Air Force. That's what National Guard do, and they get called up for international service, and sometimes in the state of Illinois when we have emergencies. Um, they are really on standby. They are, you know, at the perimeter. Uh, nobody expects that we'll have to use them uh, for anything very serious, but um, we also want to make sure that we have additional law enforcement type uh, folks who are in uniform and who are trained to be police. Uh, available. So we're just trying to cover all the bases and make sure we're doing all the right things. But remember, when you say 150, I mean, we have 13,000 National Guard in the state of Illinois and very proud of those National Guardsmen. And we do call them up when we really need them. Um, but this is a situation where I think law enforcement is a much more appropriate, um, you know, force to have on hand and ready. And again, the federal government is very much involved in this endeavor. This is a national security event, they call it, because we get the president, the vice president, and uh, you know a lot of other dignitaries around. So we're glad to have their assistance. And I feel very good about all the plan that's, that's been put in place. Any on-topic questions that we can take? 
Okay, so we only have about five minutes left for questions. Please, if you have an on-topic question, move towards the microphone. If you don't have an on-topic question, we're going to have to skip to the next reporter. Sakuma Roback, the Chicago Defender. I didn't have an on topic. Great, great. With so many African American families leaving northern cities like Chicago and other places, why um, does it make sense um, to have the NAACP convention here strategically, even logistically, in a sport? We you know, African Americans, we are in all 50 states. Uh, the NACP, we have a strong presence in 47 states. And so wherever we are called to convene, uh, hold our conference, we consider. And so although you have, we had an immigration of African Americans to the north, uh, now we're beginning to see some African Americans move across the country. And that's a beautiful thing because we make up all walks of life. We participate in this, this economy. And as an organization, we respond to our members. So as the city of Chicago reached out, uh, the state of Illinois decided to support, uh, this was one of the many uh, locations we considered. And so we look forward to convening here in Chicago because Chicago is a historic city. It was founded by an African. And so we should always understand the significance of our history and not run from it because people move away, run to it so we can really elevate the important contributions that we've made not only to this city but to, to this country. Just real quick, just to that note, there are almost three million people in the city of Chicago, of which a third of them are black. So this notion, this idea that black folks are fleeing the city of Chicago, it's not, it's not accurate. In fact, are there things that we have to do, of course, to ensure that black families in particular have stability? Well, that's why the NAACP um, is coming to the city of Chicago to have these discussions, not just about the city of Chicago, but cities across America. You know, the, the larger dynamic that we have to address is that it's becoming increasingly more unaffordable uh, to live in major cities. Uh, the fact of the matter is, as our economy t continues to grow, the NAACP has a long history of ensuring that black folks in particular participate in a growing economy. As I said, $20 billion new investments in the city of Chicago through airlines, quantum computing, and, and the like. So black folks, we're still here, and we're here to stay, and NAACP is going to ensure that black existence maintains throughout this entire country. So thank you. Thank you. We'll be taking two more questions. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Uh, Carl West, publisher of TV. <laughs> Digital Media Company. This question is for the NAACP leadership, primarily the president. What was the deciding factor that the delegates presented to you and the team that made the, what my man over there says, the greatest freaking city in Chicago, the choice? Well, you know, we have a committee that review proposals, and uh, the proposal from the city of Chicago stood uh, head and above uh, the proposals. Uh, there was nothing more than a great presentation, a great story, and the historical nature that the state of Illinois and ACP share. Nothing more, nothing less. They presented a, the right proposal, and we said, this makes sense for us. Okay, last question. Please state your name and your outlet. Rufus Williams, WVON Radio. Thank you so much for the historical walk through the beginnings of the NAAC, NAACP. Uh, but thinking about that, think about the fact that it took place in Springfield and it happened as a result of the lynchings that were there. It brings us back to the issue of Sonia Massey, who was killed right there in Springfield recently. So it brings me to the question of what are the priorities of the NAACP, the NAACP currently, and how do you address those kind of issues? Because that is, in fact, a modern day lynching which takes place more than 100 years after your founding. Right, so we were one of the first organizations to support the George Floyd Police Reform Act. Had that act passed, uh, that officer would not have been serving with any, for, any law enforcement uh, position because in that act, there would have been a, a national registry of police misconduct. This is an officer who commit harm and go agency to agency. That must stop. 
our job is to push for public policy. And, and so as we look at whether it's health care, uh, police conduct, access to affordable housing, those that's the work of the NAACP. So as we convene here in 2026, we will be uh, addressing those public policy issues we can impact. In 2020, the black vote turned out. What we begin to hear is we need to close the racial wealth gap. So what we start doing as an organization is said, you know, the pathway to do that is home ownership. But you cannot get to home ownership if your income debt ratio is too high. Well, what are the two things that's causing harm? Student loans and medical debt. And so we launched a campaign to do away with student loans. And we also recognize that the largest employer of African Americans in this country is the government, federal, state, local school districts. And so there was a provision that was adopted when President Obama was in office called um, uh, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. It needed to be tweaked. And as a result, millions of Americans have had their loans completely wiped out, particularly teachers, federal employees and law enforcement officers. And that's how we proceed with our work. So as we think about the massacre in Springfield in 1908 that triggered us to be an advocacy organization to impact the formation of public policy, as we think about the brutal attack uh, that we just witnessed, not only George Floyd and all the others, it's about public policy. And we, we will continue on that mission un as long as we exist. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone who has joined us today, our esteemed leaders, our board members, our state conference members, our partners at Choose Chicago and McCormick Place. I know the convention is two years away, but we're so excited to work together over the next two years. So just a reminder that our 117th National Convention will take place between July 18th and 22nd, 2026. Until then, we look forward to keeping in touch with all of you. Uh, if you have already been in touch with myself or a member of our team, please don't be a stranger. You can always reach us at communications at naacpnet.org. Again, thank you so much for joining us, and please stick around for some refreshments and light bites. <laughs>